Hey, Gary Hoover here with more book reviews for you. You know, if you study geography, which is important to study, uh, to understand what's going on around you is really important. And that, that ranges all the way from understanding China and India and Brazil, Indonesia, Russia, whatever, the bricky countries and maybe, uh, or the other side of the globe, all the way to understanding what's right under your nose, the neighborhood next door. In understanding a global and local and American geography, even Texas geography, it's really important to understand cities. Cities are perhaps the most amazing invention of the human species. They're, they're miracles. They're amazing. They're where commerce takes place. They're where culture and art takes place. Not that there isn't stuff going on out there outside of cities and in the country. And I actually live in a place where I can see the Milky Way on some nights. But I live like 15 minutes from downtown Austin. Not a huge city. We're about 1.8 million people now, but decent city. I love New York. I love Mexico City. And, and how these cities grow, how they die, how they compete with each other. You know, 100 years ago, Chicago and Detroit were back and forth for who was the big city in the Midwest. But Detroit put all its eggs in one basket, one industry, whereas Chicago is diversified in a lot of different industries. And that gave it the strength to keep going, whereas Detroit, as I'm sure you know, is in really rough shape. Uh, the biggest single chapter of my book uh, called The Art of Enterprise, you can buy it online as a PDF, is about cities. So a couple books about cities. If you really want to understand cities, I'd so start with two books. One of them is called Cities of the World, a real straight up title. I'll write it up here. It's called Cities of the World. <laughs> and uh, has about four million authors. Uh, the one I always remember who's been writing, working on it for a long time, a bunch of professors, is Stanley Brunn. Now, I will warn you, this is a textbook. It's like a $100 book. This is a new edition, fifth edition. I've had a second, third, fourth, fifth edition. I didn't know about it until the second edition. Uh, you won't find it in a bookstore. You gotta get it online or something because it is a textbook. Um, it's really the only book I know of that really talks about cities around the world, how cities work, but then has uh, uh, profiles of all these cities. So it talks here about different models of how city works and how cities work, how we understand them. And, and this is not complex. This is not rocket science. You're not going to have trouble understanding this. It's pretty straightforward ideas. But then they give examples. New York, a global metropolis, a couple or three pages on it. Los Angeles, 50 suburbs in search of a city. Washington, D.C., new immigrant gateway. New Orleans, vulnerable city. But it's not just the U.S. because we go on, we see Monterey, Mexico's second city. Mexico City, ancient Aztec capital, contemporary mega city. It talks about South American cities, the cities of Europe, London. It talks about Oslo, Berlin, Bucharest. It's not just the biggest cities. It's ones these academics thought were interesting or good examples. Although it does include a big chunk of the world's largest cities. So Moscow is in here. Cairo is in here. Uh, Istanbul, one of my favorite cities is in here. Kinshasa, Kinshasa? <laughs> and the Congo. Um, Mumbai in India it has, uh, gosh, four or five cities in India. Uh, and, and in Pakistan and in Bangladesh and then of course Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Jakarta, Manila, Bangkok and on through China, Asia, Australia. There's no other book that looks at these cities and really talks about them as cities and, and what they're like. In other words, there's tourist books. What hotel stay at? What restaurant stay at? No. What is it as a living, breathing organism, a city? Which ones are the sick ones, the healthy ones, and why? How are they changing? What are their big challenges? Which ones are dealing with those challenges? I will tell you, sometimes uh, there are times I don't agree with these authors or they get carried away with what I think is like, I call it the common wisdom. They say some of the same things that all these people are saying and don't always look at, at, at um, how economics really works. I mean, like, for example, sometimes you read things along the lines of, and these people are condemned to a cycle of perpetual suffering or whatever. Well, nobody's condemned to perfect, perpetual suffering. Uh, after World War II, uh, Korea had a lower per capita income than Mexico. And today, you know, it's several times as high, and it's one of the most prosperous countries in the world. Places change. I've watched change. I, over the last 20 years, I've watched Mexico City really evolve and morph into this wonderful city. So don't believe anything is static. But this is a great book if you really want to understand. And then I said I had two books, same time. I won't even write this one up. You better be able to remember it. It's called The Cities Book. 
I don't even think there's an author's name on it. It's from the uh, travel guide publishing company Lonely Planet. I think they're number one in the world now. They are uh, from um, uh, Australia, Melbourne, Australia. What they do is they, they rank the 100 best cities in the world. Now, this is more from a tourism viewpoint. What's a cool place to visit? But they do a wonderful job, and each two-page spread is uh, like a full page of photos and inf information, like what's cool to do in that city, what's not cool to do, the good things, the bad things, the vibe. It's wonderfully written, and it does include basic information like the population of the city and where it's at, and there are maps in here. Here's Helsinki and people in the sauna. Um, it's very interesting because Austin made the list, and we're not, you know, among the 100 biggest cities. Their top five, just so you'll know, they rank Paris number one, New York City, Sydney, maybe a little local bias, but if you've ever been to Sydney, you know, it's a wonderful city. Barcelona, everybody loves Barcelona, and fifth is London. And next five, Rome, San Francisco, Bangkok, Cape Town, Istanbul, one of my faves. Any case, but it goes down the list. So Heidelberg is in here, San Cristobal de las Casas, uh, down in Chiapas in Mexico, Quebec City, Perth on the west side of Australia, Oaxaca City in Mexico, one of the greatest cities in the Western Hemisphere. I was just there a few months ago. Naples, Mombasa, Valletta, and uh, Ulaanbaatar, so Thimpu, you know, so the Tbilisi. There are places in here you haven't heard of, as opposed, and including the famous ones. So when you combine this kind of visual understanding and kind of a current sensory, see, smell, touch, feel the city, what's happening, what are the young people talking about, with this academic approach, you combine those and you really get a good grasp about some of these cities and what's going on in them. And they're just fun to read. And this book is a lot cheaper than this book, even though this one's packed with color and it looks like it cost a lot to produce, but I think the Lonely Planet know where to get their books printed and save some money. Anyhow, study cities, visit cities, uh, um, observe cities, learn how they work, because they're important. And if you're starting a business and you locate in a city that's a growing, a booming city of the great future, that may be a big advantage to you. If you decide where to open new branches, a retail store, a hotel, an airline, or even a law firm or a software company, you want to open a new cities, you've got to understand cities. If you're selling in the market, say, well, where's the boom going on? Is it booming more in Austin, Texas, or in um, upstate New York? You know, pick kind of the opposite end of the scale these days, or, or Detroit. So cities are important, and they're important to you, and I believe all of us should make a greater effort to understand them. You could do worse than starting with these two books in your library. It's Gary Hoover. I'll see you later.